Hey everyone, it's so awesome to be back here with you again so quickly. I found this cute little turkey at Target made out of wood, a nice little centerpiece to do today. Um, I'm gonna use the deco art paints, Americana mostly, but of course metallics because we gotta pep this little guy up. So I know turkey time's a little early, but we're gonna go for it anyway. So I'm gonna be using a variety of tools, acrylic rods, paint brushes, and this was only three bucks. I figure if I get the video out sooner, that way you guys could go check out your Target and see if they have any more there. And for three bucks to have this fun little centerpiece that you create yourself, I figure why not, right? All right, let's zoom in on this guy here. Isn't he so pretty and shiny? <laughs> so it started off already with this brown color in the background and I'm going to continue on just using the background because it's actually smooth enough. So I'm just painting a half semicircle here, a half circle, not a half semicircle, that would be a quarter. Anyway, <laughs> semicircle here with the white, titanium white. And these are just soft bristle brushes from Arteza. They have a kind of like a premium set of liner brushes. Now we're gonna go with some nice copper. And this is the angle spot detailer brush. It's the only one like it from Princeton. So I am just dipping and dotting. That's the thing I like about brushes is you can make the dots the size that you want just by pushing down a little harder or painting a circle a little bit larger. So we're just following our semicircle here around with a few rows of the copper. And you can see now, see this brush is a size 10 and it is the same brush I'm using for all these dots. So to do the smaller ones, to do the larger ones, you're just painting them into a circle here. Still with the copper. And I just want to make sure that we put it all the way down to the edge there. So now I'm switching to raw umber, which is a bit darker. And I'm going in between the spaces around the copper. So where each copper dot meets, this will help you keep your symmetry. just going in the spaces. All right. So we're just gonna do another round of that raw umber, just a little bit larger dot. And I'm about at the size that it would be if you're using the dotting styluses, the largest dotting tool that you would have with the ball on the end. It's about three millimeters. And I'm just pushing it around into a circle with the paintbrush. So if you don't want your dots to bleed into one another too, you can always wait for the first ring to dry before you move on to the next one. So now I'm grabbing some of the rich espresso is our next row. And these are a little bit larger, so I'm trying to fill in the space just a little bit more. And as you move out, you're going to have more space so I'm just painting it into a circle. It's a decently soft bristled brush. This one's pretty broken in though, I will say. it's I've had it for a while. You can see even the wand is starting to crack from times where I left them in my water. Don't do that, it's a big mistake. <laughs> Keep your brushes nice. But it's barely broken in. You can see how soft it is on the end. All right, so the rich espresso. And now I'm just gonna tuck in some of the white here along the rich espresso. We'll just do a couple dots of the white. And 
And I'm just tucking a couple in to the spaces between each of the rich espresso dots. So now I'm going to show you, I'm going to grab one of these wands, the acrylic rods. And I'm using cocoa for the color, which is the deco art ones are decently fluid enough that you don't have to do much with it. So you can see it doesn't make a peak. It makes a nice little plump dot here. And if you want them a little larger, you can just add a little more paint on top of each one. Just be careful they don't run. And I'm just putting these ones over the two dots of white that we just put down, trying to tuck them in. And so depending on spacing, a lot of times when I do the animals, you're going to run out of room and the spacing is going to look off as you're doing it. But ultimately at the end, you're not going to notice that there wasn't a cocoa dot above every single one of the two. <laughs> So this does look white on the screen, but I actually am using Oyster Beige. Just to kind of tone it down a little. White tends to be pretty bright, and I just want to, you know, subdue the colors just a little bit here. So this is a little thick. These are, this is Champagne, and it's in the multi-surface. And I'm using the larger acrylic rod um, to put these down, but you can see it's kind of... I don't know how to explain it. I guess suctioning the paint <laughs> towards the space or towards the center, depending on how you lift it up, it kind of just sucks the paint with it because um, you get that little vacuum. Now, you can thin these paints. Um, I, I didn't want to do it because I wanted to show how you can just grab another tool and just kind of spread it out um, and have it be okay. Um, plus, then you don't run the risk of losing the luster of the metallics. Sometimes some of them I've noticed will do that. Not usually with the deco art because I rarely thin them. But there were other brands where I had done that and it, it did lose its sheen and the luster of the metallics, the mica or whatever they're using in it for the metallic look. So see, I didn't have enough on there. So I'm just gonna put a little bit more. This will also start to happen if your paint is starting to dry out, but the champagne is a little difficult to work with but it's so worth it you'll see after so I'm just gonna take um, one of the styluses and just add a little paint onto it and just kind of spread it around a little bit here to smooth out each dot like I said it's it's mildly cumbersome extra step and I find using the acrylic rods will do this sometimes with the thicker paints too but this is just a way you can kind of fix that so that it creates a smooth dot for you in the end. See, these are the ones, the multi-surface. And to be honest, I only find it really for some reason with the champagne one so far, and I've used a lot of these because I kind of am obsessed with the metallics. I love them. Plus a nice big old plump dot on here really beefs up the design. Draws attention to our little turkey. But you can see now they're dry and it's it's a lot better, it doesn't have that space. So this looks red a little bit, but it is worn penny, so it's a little darker of a copper. And I'm gonna just grab it here to pop on top of our cocoa dots as well. But this is a thing too that'll help beef up your design by adding top dots. And you wanna make sure it's decently dry on top. But I'm just using one of the smaller acrylic rods. And you can see this is the dazzling metallic. It's thinner. It doesn't have the same issue that the multi-surface one did. All right, so I grabbed a little of the Venetian gold here. Oops, I almost dripped. Why is it dripping? Ah. So I'm just using my brush to kind of tuck in some dots here over our oyster beige. And I know I'm going a little quick today. I just really wanted to get this little turkey out there. I'll list all of the stuff in the description, paint colors, everything that you need. 
This is the Etcher tool that I sell in my shop. Great for little tiny dots. Everyone I see is calling them micro dots, so I'm going to hop on board with that, the micro dots. And if you just start at the top, you get your larger dot and then work your way down and around to get the smaller ones. And I use this etcher for swipes. I use it to sketch on my design if I want to kind of have some symmetry or make a design on there that I see ahead of time. I use it for a lot of different things. So the color I'm using here is not white, it's actually buttermilk. So you can see it has just that tint of yellow, which helps kind of tie in your golds. And that's what the color combos, that's really just something I enjoy doing is just kind of playing with tying in colors so that it doesn't look like I just splashed a crazy amount of color that nothing ties into one another, which can be a whole new design, vibrant. just. Not the look I was going for for our little turkey today. So we have nice warm coppers and browns and then this little pop of champagne. We're all gonna tie it in here. So are you all getting ready for the holidays? I see the Christmas stuff is out in the stores. I gotta do Thanksgiving first for sure. I know it'll be different this year with the gathering amounts and whatnot, but I'm really looking forward to some downtime to just hang out with family. How about you all? Where are you tuning in from? Feel free to stop in the comments and say hey from wherever you are having a therapeutic time making a turkey here. <laughs> I'm probably better at painting turkeys than I am at cooking them. Although I probably have to ask my husband and my family for their opinion in that. What kind of turkey recipes do you guys make? Oh, that's a good idea. I know when I did the Christmas tree, we talked about the bacon recipe I do every year, which is one thing, super tasty, probably really bad for you, but so worth it. So what kind of turkey recipes? Do you guys have special stuffing? My mom makes this amazing cranberry relish with oranges and apples, that type of cold relish, cranberry relish, as opposed to the jelly. Stop in, say hi, tell me what you eat. Can you tell I'm hungry while I'm painting today? So I did switch to the brush here, just so you're seeing the difference in the tool. But it's just whatever I grab, so. Let's grab a little more of that oyster beige and tuck it in here so we're carrying that out as well. I'm just tucking it in between each of these. Alright, now I want to show you, you can do the swipes with this etcher tool. So get a good amount on it, drop it off into a dot, and then pull it along the area that you want it to go. So I want my tail to kind of curve around each of these elements, so that's all I'm doing is I'm just dropping off the paint, then dragging it out, letting the tail just get smaller because there's less paint on the tool. See, I have too much on this tool, I'm going to drop it off at a couple spots. And this one, the design ends here, so I'm just going to tuck a little tail off to the side. But you can see how quick it just tuck it right in there. And you don't have to do it fast, it'll still be wet. You can drag the tail out multiple lengths. See, this is a little bit longer. And if it doesn't go quite far enough, 
You can always dip it again or grab from the tail that you have already made and pull it longer. See, this one's gonna have to be a longer one, so I have to just keep grabbing it from the tail and then pull it out longer. You guys can do this. Or you can switch to a brush. <laughs> so the brush holds more paint and it's about pressure. So I'm pushing down harder at the top. So I get that little dollop at the beginning. And sometimes you can do this and just double dip that paint so that you have enough to really pull it out. And I'm not super worried about the ends of these because I'm going to go over them with other layers of feathers. So the directionality sometimes of your tool, I'm pulling this towards myself just because that's how I'm more comfortable. But it may be more comfortable for you to push the tool away from yourself or align your turntable sideways so it's more like you are just painting a line as if you were drawing a line with a pencil in your hand. So you just have to find what works for you. This is that worn penny color again. Look how rich. It's, it's reddish, but it's just... I want to say I don't want to associate paint with food. I guess I'm already doing that with my turkey, huh? And asking for recipe ideas. So we'll just tuck a couple more little ones under here. And then we have to wait for that to dry to do our next layer. So we'll work over here. And I'm just going to fill in the head of the turkey with random dots of the raw umber to just kind of bulk up his color a little bit. His base color is more of, uh, it's a lighter umber, more of a lighter brown, almost espresso, just lighter. So I'm just going to fill in his head and neck with dots of these. I'm using my brush. But you can use your dotting tool. I just am impatient and I can put more paint on a brush so it's less time to fill all this in. I've talked to a lot of people though who enjoy the therapeutic idea of dip and dot, dip and dot. They said it's almost a zen, zen-like experience for them, which is awesome. Admittedly, I'm trying to rush it in between bringing kids to school, so don't let yourself feel rushed. Just take your time and paint your little guy. All right, so while those are drying, I will go back and just kind of tuck in here between our umber, because it is so dark, I feel like I need to break it up a little. And you don't have to, but I'm using the oyster beige to kind of tuck it in here with the etcher. So when you're going to make a design or add to these too, once you start getting to the interior, it's good to just kind of take a look to see if your spacing allows for each. So I wanted to make sure I could fit a little dot of raw umber in between. And you don't have to fill all the negative space either. That really makes the design your own unique design, depending on what you do with your space. So filling it, not filling it, it just depends on what you feel like creating for that time. So this is raw umber with the etcher tool. I'm gonna get my little beak here, why not? <laughs> Maybe another, yeah. Alrighty. So there's our little turkey and he's dried quite a bit now so I can come back in. Let's go with some more metallic. We'll grab the espresso and just kind of fill in some more of his head and neck. And I'm not worrying about spacing with this. I'm literally just overlapping haphazardly just to fill it in for color. You can see. And I'll probably come back in with like a milk chocolate or something once that's dry too. All right. So now this is swipes with your dotting tool using a stylus. And I have rose gold for my color. It's one of the metallic. Well, this one is multi-surface I think as well. 
And so I'm just going to kind of help fill in his feathers a little bit here. Give it a little dimension and the color helps with that as well. But you can see I'm just dipping and swiping and there's not a lot to it. I am touching it to the actual wood. And going back to what I said before about adding colors throughout and just kind of carrying them throughout the piece. We're going to put some top dots of the rose gold on top of our worn penny here. And then I think too, we'll go in here with the rose gold and just tuck a little bit of that in between our first top row of the raw umber. All right, so I've waited. This is just another dotting stylus. It's not, it's the same size as the other one. I just grabbed it. It's milk chocolate for the color of the paint. And I'm not going quite up as high to the top of the rose gold, so I'm just tucking more feathers down here to bulk up his tail just a little bit here. There we go. So I'm just going to tuck a little of that milk chocolate all throughout his head here as well. A lot of you have asked how you would keep seeing my videos um, when I put them out. So I also show them, I pop on Facebook and say, hey, I got a new video out, that type of thing. But if you hit the subscribe button, you'll get an actual notification each time I put a new video out and you won't have to search. It'll just tell you I have put a new one out. Here's our little turkey. So I hope you enjoyed creating this with me. He came out pretty good, I think. It'll be a good centerpiece for our Thanksgiving this year. So again, please feel free to stop in and say hi. All right, just a reminder, I have a new Facebook page. It's still Miranda Patron Art, as with my website. is still MirandaPatronArt.com for everything seen here in the video and palettes, everything. You can find me there. Have a great day and happy painting.